friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I am using my old camera now. So I had shared that I'd had an incident with my good camera that I usually use and I had to send it back in, well, had to send it in for repairs. Um, so that went off in the mail yesterday. So I'm using my backup camera. This is a very similar camera to what I had before. Um, just kind of an older model. Same microphone, so hopefully the sound is, is good and all that. Today, I am out here gathering up fencing because we decided for a number of reasons that when it came to the chickens, we're just gonna let them go. So I'm gathering up all of the electric poultry fencing, well, most of it, and I'm gonna store that away for the time being. When you look at the hillside here where the chickens have been contained, um, there's nothing for them. There's no greenery. Uh, it's just down to dirt and rock. The whole point of having them out and about is so that they can eat all the bugs and the greens and the, you know, the lizards and the mice and all the things that they like to catch because yes, chickens love to eat all that stuff. And if they're stuck inside a dirt patch, then to me that's not happy chickens. That's not a happy chicken life. That's not a good life. And so we let them go. But the other reason is, you know, when you contain chickens in an area, unless it's a massive area, um, they're going to take it down to dirt in no time because they scratch, they peck, they do all the chicken things. And considering that our homestead is on the side of a mountain, we don't need to be encouraging erosion. And so that is another reason I decided to just let the chickens go. Let them, let them run loose, let them go up on the mountain, let them go into the woods, let them do all the happy chicken things. Um, because really it's better for them and ultimately it'll be better for our homestead. So not only was it time to let the, the big flock of chickens out, it was also time to let the younger chickens out and let them begin free roaming and all of that. Um, we had moved the chickens, the young ones, out of the pen where they were in the, the shed and put them in the outdoor pen where we used to have the guineas which is right next to where the chicken coop is. And we did that so that they could all see each other, but still be separated by the wall of the pen. Allowing chickens to see each other for a good long time before you let them actually um, loose and, and let the, the flock merge together. I think that's the easiest way to go about doing it. Um, some people will put chickens inside like a dog crate in the coop for a while, to me, that's just, I mean, if it works for you, great. I just much prefer to have something a little bit bigger. In the past, we used a cattle panel structure um, to integrate flocks, and that worked really well. Uh, we also used our smaller original coop there in uh, Alabama as the, the grow out coop. And then the little fenced run was just kind of the area for the chickens to go out and all see each other while still being safe. So I just tend to like to err on the side of giving them more space um, and all of that. But this morning is when we finally let the younger chickens out. The young hens were all just about full size. Now when it came time to move the young hens out of the pen that we had put them in when they outgrew the brooder, you know, getting them out to where they would be exposed to the other chickens. That same night, we also moved the bantams out of the chicken tractor into that pen. And then that way, both the young hens and the bantams were in a brand new place so that they could integrate into one flock without there being too much issue because they were all in a new place. And then it gave them all the ability to see the bigger, older chickens for the older chickens to see them kind of get used to each other. I think it's been about two weeks now that we've had them in the pen right next to the chicken coop and now it's time to let them out. And so we let them out this morning and it was pretty funny because, you know, we have this little bitty rooster who is a jerk. His name is Willie. And the only reason he's still around is because he's so little and he, he doesn't do too much damage. But every so often he has to kind of show himself and, and we have to put him in his place. 
But we've had him a couple of years, and when we got him as a baby, we also got some white silkies. And those silkies were his girls. Until one night, something got into the chicken coop. Uh, we don't know what it was, raccoon, fox, we're not sure. And it killed all the silkies. And even though Willie is a little bit of a, a jerk, um, we felt really bad for him because within a flock you have mini flocks and he and the silkies were their own mini flock and they went everywhere together and did everything together and all of a sudden he was alone well it did not take long at all for him to realize that there was a whole new group of ladies and since they don't have their own rooster he has stepped in to be their companion of course they're all bigger than he is but he don't care those little roosters do tend to be a little big for their britches anyways 